Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well, and of course Arnie does too. Our oceans are home to some pretty iconic reptiles, but few of them are more iconic than our sea turtles. These elegant reptiles are living representatives of a group of reptiles that have existed on this planet for a hundred million years. Today it doesn't look so good for the sea turtles, as many of them are threatened, and some are even critically endangered. This is not only bad news for the sea turtles, but bad for the overall health of the marine ecosystems, as sea turtles play a very important role to maintain the health of our coral reefs and seagrass beds. Over the millions of years that they've been on this planet, they have evolved into many different shapes and sizes, and I will be going through just a few of them today, as I will be going through five of some of the largest sea turtles in the world. And for our first species, we'll be heading to the warm and tropical waters of the Pacific and Indian Oceans, as we have the Olive Ridley Sea Turtle. This species is the most abundant of all the sea turtles, and is named because of the olive colour of their carapace. As this species is number five on this list, you may assume that it's the fifth largest sea turtle in the world, but unfortunately this is not the case as there's seven species of sea turtle, and the title of fifth largest goes to the flatback sea turtle. I would have loved to have included this species on this list, but unfortunately because they have the smallest range out of all the sea turtles, being endemic to the sandy beaches and shallow coastal waters of Australia, there's not a lot of footage and images I can use to put in a video. So unfortunately, even though the flatback sea turtle is the fifth largest sea turtle in the world, I haven't been able to include it on this list, so I'll go back to the olive ridley turtle. In its native range, the olive ridley turtle is predominantly carnivorous, with some of its favourite foods being jellyfish, sea urchins, shrimp and lobsters. Although it's the most abundant of the sea turtles, it's actually listed as vulnerable to extinction. This vulnerable status comes from the fact that they nest in a very small number of places, so therefore any disturbance to even one nest site could have huge repercussions. This species along with the related Kemp's Ridley turtle are best known for their unique mass nesting sites, as thousands of females will often congregate together to lay their eggs on the same beach. Some of their major nesting sites are in Central America, America, India, and the west coast of Africa. When these turtles decide to breed, it really is a massive occasion, as unfortunately a large list of animals are more than happy to eat their eggs and also eat the baby turtles. And although a female can lay up to a hundred eggs, a very small number of these developing turtles will make it to maturity. But if they do get a chance to make it to maturity, they're thought to reach a maximum size of around 2.5 feet or 0.7 meters across the carapace and weigh around 50 kilograms or 110 pounds. And to put that into perspective, that's around the same weight as a snow leopard or an eastern grey kangaroo. So although it's the most abundant sea turtle, it's nowhere near the largest. But for our next species we'll be heading both to the Atlantic and Indo-Pacific oceans, as we have the Hawksbill sea turtle. This turtle is so named because of its pointed beak, which is said to resemble a hawk's bill. And this bill isn't only good for helping us name this species, but it's also very handy when it comes to feeding, as they mainly patrol coral reefs, where they're on the look for sponges, sea anemones and jellyfish. Their more pointed bill helps them get into cracks and crevices, which means it's a very effective tool to get at their food. Unfortunately, the hawksbill is one of the more threatened species, as they're currently listed as critically endangered, with many of the reasons for their decline being human related. As many hawksbills have been killed by humans, either accidentally or deliberately, as turtles are some of the worst affected animals when it comes to plastic pollution in our oceans, as plastic bags can often look like their regular food, and their hard shells are very good at getting caught up in fishing nets. Because of this, there are many different conservation efforts around the world, and hopefully we can bring this turtle back from the brink of extinction. But when this species is happy and healthy, they're thought to reach a maximum size of around a metre or three feet across the carapace, and weigh up to 120 kilograms, or 260 pounds. And to put that into perspective, that's around the same weight as a giant panda or an Arabian oryx. So hopefully with a little help, we'll see more of these turtles in the future. But for our next species, we'll be heading to all tropical and subtropical waters around the world, as we have the green sea turtle. Now although its common name is the green sea turtle, there's actually a subspecies known as the black turtle. These turtles Turtles are obviously darker in colour and are usually found in the Pacific Ocean, whereas more of the true green coloured turtles are found in the Atlantic Ocean. Green sea turtles are unique among sea turtles, as they are primarily herbivorous, eating mostly seagrass and algae. This diet gives their fat a greenish colour, which is where their name comes from. Like many other turtles, green turtles are known to travel incredibly long distances during their lifetime, as some have been known to travel across entire ocean basins to move from their feeding areas to their nesting beaches. These nesting beaches are normally the same beaches in which they hatched, and the two largest remaining nesting sites for the green turtles are on the Caribbean coast and the Great Barrier Reef. But unfortunately this is another species that's listed as endangered, mainly due down to the impacts that humans have on their nesting sites, and also by getting hit by boats and getting caught in fishing gear. But if given a chance to reach maturity,
maturity, they can reach a maximum size of around 1.5 meters or 5 feet across the carapace. And at this size, they weigh around 395 kilograms, which is around 870 pounds. And to put that into perspective, that's around the same weight as a bearded seal or a moose. But again, hopefully with a little help, we'll see more of this mostly vegetarian turtle in the future. But for our next species, we'll be heading to pretty much all marine waters worldwide, as we have the loggerhead turtle. Loggerhead turtles are named so because of their broad, muscular heads. These chunky heads, along with their blunt jewels, allow them to feed on a wide range of hard-shelled prey, as they're known to feed on horseshoe crabs, whelks, and even conches. The species spends most of its life in the open ocean and shallow coastal waters, and is actually the most abundant species of marine turtle found in the waters around the United States. But again, this turtle is in peril, as it is listed as vulnerable to extinction. One of the biggest factors for this turtle is that coastal development has reduced the area in which they can successfully nest. Because as many countries try to take advantage of tourism, this often means bad news for the turtles. And as many loggerheads' natural habitat also overlap with rich fishing grounds, it means that many of them are accidentally caught in fishing nets. Like many other young turtles, baby loggerheads are known to use the moon and the stars as an indicator of where to run to when they hatch. But as humans also cause a lot of light pollution, this often confuses these baby turtles and usually leads to them needing help from humans. But when this species does reach maturity, it is the largest of the hard-shelled turtles, as they're thought to reach a maximum size of around 2.1 meters, and a turtle of this size would weigh around 450 kilograms, or 1,000 pounds. And to put that into perspective, that's around the same weight as a northern sea lion, or Weddell seal. So that really isn't a bad size for the largest hard-shelled turtle. But again, for our final species, we'll be heading to all oceans worldwide, as we have the leatherback turtle. Now this species is probably the most unique and well-known turtle, and is the only living member of its family. The leatherback is the most migratory species of sea turtle, as it's been known to swim around the globe, crossing the Atlantic, Pacific, and even traveling as far north as Alaska and Norway. The leatherback turtle got its name because of its thick, leathery skin. And although this wasn't always the case, today it's the only sea turtle not to have a hard shell. Leatherback turtles are also known to be the best divers of the sea turtles, being able to reach depths of around 1,200 meters or 4,000 feet. This turtle feeds almost exclusively on jellyfish, and this means that they have a very important role in the ecosystem to control jellyfish populations. The leatherback turtle also has a very weird adaptation to help them feed on these jellyfish, as they have hundreds of papillae, which are small spiny structures, on the inside of their mouth and their throat. This helps them swallow these jellyfish and stops them from escaping when they expel excess water. But as I've covered, unfortunately jellyfish can look very similar to plastic bags, and as Californians alone use upwards of 19 billion plastic bags every year, this really doesn't bode well for the leatherbacks, as they're known to eat these bags, which not only can poison them, but can obstruct their digestive tracts. And this is just thought to be one of the reasons why today they are listed as critically endangered. But if they avoid plastic bags, they are not only the largest sea turtle, but are the heaviest non-crocodilian reptile, as the largest leatherback on record was around 3 meters or 10 feet from the tip of its beak to the tip of its tail. And this giant weighed in at around 916 kilograms, or around 2,000 pounds. And to put that into perspective, that's around the same weight as a walrus or a giraffe. So the leatherback really is the king of sea turtles. But that's about it for this video. As always, if you have any suggestions for videos, then leave them down in the comments below. But thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.